Yeah, so <laughs> when I started this whole transition, I said that you're in a, such a rush, and in your like rushed state, you, you literally like li a life is a lifetime. A life is a, is a whole lifetime. And yet people are in such a rush to get things in order that they might compete, that they're messing up in Bilozago to quickly acquire things. And then later on, they're regretting them and the consequences are so severe. The consequences are so bitterness, it has now caused a second wave of attack. Bitterness is causing a second wave of witchcraft. What is that bitterness? The bitterness of loss. The bitterness of you don't have your best friend anymore. And so now you are doing everything in your power as Abatagati, right? To never have to feel sad when the person you bewitched gets everything they wanted when the person that you hurt is able to live a, a life above reproach essentially what's going on right now is that people who got themselves entangled in the occult they've burned so many bridges that they can't stand the prospect of watching people with clean hands honest lives even if they don't have much even if they don't have much even if they are still working that same tired old boring job that the boss keeps on like breathing down your neck very uncomfortably but at least your hands are clean you don't have an evil conscience the prospect of their victims going into the lifetime that remains with a clean conscience while they live in the sorrow and in the darkness of their is so grating that now there is literally a second wave of witchcraft attacks on their exact same victims like for instance the girl that the other girl who got rich at 15 bumping into her former friend that she gave shade when they were 15 but she was the one that got big while the other one remained a regular 15 year old see her at the mall literally hair is even out of place she's disheveled because she's busy doing so many things at the same time trying to finish her degree trying to uh do her job she's frustrated because she can't even stand the job but she has to keep it in order to pay for her fees and she feels like she's even gained like weight she's gained like five kilograms from the time that you were kids and so she's looking a little bit you know rounder than normal she's not even looking that great nothing about her is uh, has exceeded or excelled above the, the 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 petty girl when they were together as friends in school at 15. Mm. despite her disheveled disposition and all of her struggles in life her challenges the problems she has with her boss the issues she has with paying her fees and her, the weight that she's gaining because of stress and all that jazz despite that just the prospect of her finally with her hands clean breaking through and finally finding the relief she needs so she can join the gym and shed the kilos that's the prospect of her getting what she wants eats them alive so badly that they that then she goes on right ahead and sabotages this friend using the money that she has by basically paying off a lecturer at her university to fail her in one of her exams because she's still got money but this girl does not have uh, much and she's using every last cent that she works for to put it towards her education and she can't wait to graduate and then she goes and pays off some crooked lecturer to fail her so she can repeat the year stressing her further because the moment she graduates and gets a better job it means she's gonna get to live a life that is healthy without guilt and go into the sunset without her so she sabotages it there is a second wave of attack by witches on their victims from what the lord is showing me because you were in a rush to get all these random things that you wanted to get real quickly and in the process, you stepped on so many toes and crushed so many skulls. Crushed so many skulls that nobody trusts you anymore. And you're facing a future of loneliness. A life is a lifetime, guys. It's not just your 20s or your 30s. And these are people who had their fill of their late 20s and all of their 30s, destroying everything. And now they're busy standing on the chests of all of their victims. The victims of which are still struggling to come up for air. Now let's just talk about witches all together and stop making the American analogy with the Gen Z youth that's falling apart. Listen up. Witches. You bewitch every Tom, Dick and Harry archer in these streets to get ahead. You take their careers. You take their degrees. You take their, their, their dreams, their um, marriages. You break apart marriages. You decimate relationships so that the guy who's proposed marriage won't finish what he started by walking the woman down the aisle. 
You break, you, 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 you cause so much division, dissension. You sow discord between mother and daughter. In so doing, you then earn yourself a, a, a quite the chunky bank account. You earn yourself a lot of money. You're wealthy, you're the only one out of your crew of friends. You know witches, I don't get you. You know there are witches who will go on right ahead or people who are into the occult, who will go on right ahead to say to a Sangoma, I want you to make me All the right, only, I, just... sh I want you to make me the only successful person in my whole family. I wanna make a lot of money, but I don't want my sister getting ahead and my two brothers. I wanna be the only one that's doing really well. And then a Sangoma, irresponsibly allows such a ritual that's why the witchcraft must be regulated it has to be regulated people should not be able to ask the sangoma for such spells and not be scared that should a government official happen upon this information that they could find themselves either fined or in prison because that is uh, robbing people of constitutional rights constitutional rights it's crime it's broad daylight robbery but you know what thank you that there is a god thankfully there is a god that's going to you know set to balance out those scales but there are people who literally go and lay, lay waste and destitute all of their siblings so they can be the only ones successful. So we are finding the, the, a CEO in a company while all of these brothers and sisters, they're gardeners, maids, working in the call center. The most advanced one is an administrator for projects, but they can never break past a certain layer. Sitting around at the age of 42 and you're still a project administrator, what in the world is going on? Your colleagues that are in the same layer are all 21 year olds. They're all 22 year olds. You're the only 45 year old project administrator, but your brother is a CEO of one of the biggest companies in the country. There are people who do that to their own families. So now, once you have done such a thing as that, you're gonna obsess over the strivings of all of your siblings. Your siblings might even catch on to you. You're gonna be the one trying to finance all of your siblings everything. Your siblings are gonna wonder, Koto, when you were in school, all of us, I was the straight A student. Why can't I get like a basic, like middle management job? Hey, what is it about this guy that is so average that has made him fly like this while all of us are struggling? So they, they strain relations and they mess everything up with Wonkumuntu. And then when they make an observation of their siblings striving, because witchcraft has a sell by date, believe it or not. It has a sell by date. Nyobuza are all these ritualists all over the show. The things that they acquire, they sometimes get told you've got seven years to make all the money you want to make. After that, you must die. Or after that, you got to come back and do another ritual and whatnot. Dinzina makes expired dates. And when they look at their family members still striving, really trying, like the, the woman whose degree you stole, like my cousin came against my degree. That's why today still, I literally have got a whole thriving degree at this university, except for one module, one module, one module. He shot that guy and now graduate. So I look like a matriculant. That's what's good. Even though I spent years grinding Eskolwen, I would have been a triple major, a triple major. Yes, like it guys. Yeah, no. So when she pulled her little witchcraft stunt, there was certainly an expiry date to when that thing would would operate meaning that at any given time if i made a decision that and finish that one subject negotiate with vits to give me um, no vits messed up you know in some okay it's a long story i'm not even gonna explain it because the way that things happened for me was creepy evidencing that there was spiritual activity going on when they make an observation that a person is still striving they didn't give up. By a push, are they resisting the witchcraft? They're resisting it. That's when they bring a second wave. Because the cousin does not want to see the person graduate anyway. They don't want to see honest people survive. Because it hurts to watch honest people living happy lives that are free of the burden of guilt. When you are carrying a whole cadaver for... When you've got theologies, when you've got snakes, when you've got some weird little ghost, you're not gonna want your sister to just live a happy life without having a dark shrine. There's which one of the guys that wreaked havoc in my life, right? The Lord showed me has like a, he lives in, in, in some mansion in one of the Lani suburbs of South Africa in the north, right? Of Johannesburg. And his house is a beautiful home, except one room that no one is, is allowed to go into. Not his children, not his wife. And this room is a shrine. It's dark, it's dark, it has no windows. It's got all different kinds of ugly paraphernalia in there. And he has kept not just my destiny in that place, but that of many other women that he, he that he twilight, the all twelling He has got carrying wealth and prosperity with other people's fortunes 
and they are chilling in that room and he is surveilling them in one dark room in the middle of a very beautiful house but one one room in that house is not beautiful it's dark it's dingy now when when that's you and there is somebody standing a chance an opportunity to get a similar house to yours but without that one room you are gonna envy the living daylights out of that person because you don't have to worry about guarding that room making sure the kids don't go in otherwise because the moment anybody goes inside that room there, there there is a consequence spiritually his wife happening upon the in the stuff in that room and his children there are consequences very dire ones so he has to make sure nobody goes in there make sure but if somebody finds themselves in there anyway like a maid like one of the, the kids just jfella break down the door and they go inside something is going to hurt witchcraft practitioners which much rather not have to do that but they gotta do it in order to get ahead and so they covet they envy everybody that doesn't have to do this stuff in order to be okay so when somebody makes money when somebody's wealthy the clean way yes like a bane of witches existence they covet them they envy them because it's like why what's so special about her why does she not have to do all these things why yeah now does she not have a, th a shrine in her room in her in her house why doesn't she uh, why yeah now isn't she carrying it bigolosh why isn't she carrying his porgy why isn't she why anga twelanga yana nge nchanta zavantu bagibo why is she not carrying like prosperity with the fortunes of her own family members how did Garabo get to be what it is under heaven without all of this baggage? It's the baggage for them. And the fact that with the baggage also comes loss of relationships. They no longer have people in their lives that they rely on. They no longer have people in their lives that they really love. They've got a whole bunch of poses, fakers that are only kind to them because they make money. They don't have real relationship and they don't have real purpose. They are always on edge. They're always feeling unsafe and they're always surveilling all their victims. Because like I said, witchcraft has an expiry date. And so because it has an expiry date, they're always looking at their victims to make sure they never come up for air again until their lives are over. And I'm going to explain to you some of the witchcraft of my cousins and their lovers, boyfriends, husbands now, and what they're still trying to do to me. And some other one guy that I don't know, but he's busy looking at my life and he already envies me even though he doesn't know me because they covet righteousness and they are looking at me on some we need to ex like extend the goal post out the 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 mission the things the spells that we cast we said that she must get to this particular place but now we're gonna move it out when i woke up from this dream i was like hey god am i ever gonna catch a break and the lord was like Arabo, don't forget you are not under a spell you are teaching lessons therefore their witchcraft all of it that they throw to you you must not fear it you understand yourself comprehend yourself thoroughly as job you're going through a test and after this test is over there is a door which i have opened that no man can close so they will know that all along they were playing they were dilly dallying dancing around doing rubbish that they imagined was successful witchcraft so far they think they have prospered to get what they want out of you and they won't repent it is the reason why i have not given you breakthrough yet they will not repent until they make an observation of your wish or of your breakthrough and the thing about it is a wicked and a perverse generation seeks after a sign so they've been waiting to see your breakthrough to see if i'm any good as god and it is that very thing that has agree aggrieved me aggravated me it is that very thing that is an egregious assault on my justice on, on the justness in my heart so i've handed them over to a reprobate mind by making them believe that you're under their spells therefore when you thrive and you conquer and you prosper and you keep on doing a wonderful thing they look at the life in you that is clean they look at your your above reproach life they look at your innocence and the fact that you have not touched any of this dark stuff and it it, it like it has increased or ravaged them ravaged them with so much envy that just the mere prospect of you getting your life together again has is gonna cause them to send you a, a second wave of sorcery that is to last another decade here guys <laughs> a new wave of witchcraft that is going to leave me in this condition for another decade because what they did well, another decade what they um what is this intended to do to me they did not achieve it and there are certain spells that they have cast that they are not a that, that have not worked among them are aging spells 
like age her very suddenly um make her fat uh, regress go back the world miss it uh compromise leave christianity they have tried all these things and so they're asking themselves scratching their head if they were not, if she did not leave christianity if she's not gained weight if she has only popped pimples but not actually aged overnight and just like all of a sudden um if all these spells did not work but somehow we managed to take away her job we took away her degree we took away her uh, family we took so many other things away why is it that some of our witchcraft is working and others is not working and other witchcraft is not working and upon making that observation and asking themselves those questions they were supposed to repent and realize that i'm not under a spell i'm just going through one of those modes in life it is a test a suffering if it's people you win some you lose some man is born for adversity people go through stuff they 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 are cool today tomorrow they're struggling they get rugs pulled under their feet they get thrown under buses that's just the human experience and these people are supposed to get to a conclusion that i'm undergoing a human experience rather than imagine that i am undergoing witchcraft attacks because there are spells that have literally just bounced off me like not even affecting me even in the slightest that ought to have made them realize that this is not witchcraft working this is just life whatever god was going through in life it's god's to do this in her life for whatever purpose and so one day that it it might very feasibly be true they ought to have made that inference because they're reasonable they ought to have reasonably foreseen that the day's going to arrive when none of their witchcraft is working as in none of it meaning that you're not going to be able to steal degrees anymore you're not going to be able to steal wealth money you're not going to be able to steal husbands anymore you're not going to be able to steal wombs anymore in this person's life because you never were stealing god so it fit to keep her single to a certain age god so it fit to make sure she doesn't have children by a certain age god is the one that orchestrates a person's life psalm 139 it is written that every last one of the days of our lives are counted by god he knows them full well he knits us to he knits us together in our mother's wombs and before any single day of our lives comes to pass he knows it full well so whatever it is that i'm going through has been planned and foreordained by a holy and perfect god meaning that i'm not under a spell however i am a very strong delusion to spell casters and spell casters were given grace in the sense that certain of their spells were not allowed to law to work or what they imagined were their spells they obviously did not work and so those spells that failed ought to have made them wonder but what's up with that maybe this is not working maybe this woman is just going through life that was your grace and you're not going to get it however in continuing to do witchcraft that's going to be the end of your lives witches that's when god is going to knock you out the way because not everybody has got the grace of god covering them in protection psalm 91 style as carabo because in order to qualify for protection under psalm 91 you have to be born again and frankly most of the world is not born again but there is something called the common grace of god that generally and ubiquitously covers all the people of the earth from all the spells of the occult working and that is the grace of god to help the occult realize that there is a power mightier than theirs stays the the effect the, the efficacy the efficacy of sorcery the that makes sure that it doesn't succeed 100% otherwise the world would be thrown to the dogs given all the wild dreams that witches have concerning their victims that ought save them the invisible qualities of god are all over creation and they've got their consciences but instead they keep on trying and trying and trying and trying and think that witchcraft is a you win some you lose some game how in the world are you sticking around with a god that cannot guarantee you breakthrough or deliverance or answered prayer how in the world are you sticking around with him or a god that gives you 60 percent of answered prayer 50 percent 45 percent when you can find one who not only gives you 100 percent but gives you exceedingly and abundantly above that 100 percent one that gives you that which neither eye has seen nor ear heard nor mind conceived the things which god has prepared for those who wait on him why in the world and heaven are you not consulting with a god that can actually provide a good and a perfect gift that is from above and from the father of heavenly lights and is therefore not laden with darkness why would you embrace a god that makes you build a shrine in your house that you have to make sure that your child and your wife don't and your maid don't walk into otherwise something might happen to you why would you want to go with a god that's going to burden you with an unseemly unseemly creature like it etigoloshi or snake that you are gonna have to carry around in your environment and no not as a pet that other people can see like you know how white people can keep snakes for pets but it's hidden with you in some kind of a calabash because you're literally hiding it from all of society it's not a pet it is in to that apparently allegedly vomits money or whatever why would you want to stick around with a god that gives you gifts that way why would you want to sit around with a god that makes sure that you cannot get wealth unless you drink 
drink blood or you eat human flesh unless you do unless you hurt a friend unless you give your mother as a sacrifice a human sacrifice unless you you accept the death of your baby sister why would you want to take that the bible says every good and perfect gift is from above and from the father of heavenly lights why would you want to run with a god that said that strains your relationship with your best friend your best cousin that insists that you go and break up a marriage in order for you to get your marriage that insists that you gotta go and steal another woman's womb in order for you to fall pregnant why why would you want to stick around with such a, a lackluster uncomfortable god that needs things of this earth in order to make his magic work why not go to one who is ex nihilo providing in other words he creates something out of nothing he can just give you a baby out of nowhere he can just open your womb out of nowhere he can just a little, little like rain falling from heaven like confetti uh, uh, shower you with a latter rain of provision in your life even though for five years you struggle to even so much as get a home loan for a house your one bedroom but now you're living in like a whole three bedroomed house with a servant's quarters why not without anything that that is a strange little funny odd guilt on the side or a snake in your house why would you want to trust a god guys it doesn't make sense anyway yeah i'm busy just kind of wrapping on here about these ominous antics of the occult and how it is that you're like american youth that one day are gonna grow up to be very uncomfortable make like african youth and allow yourself to grow up the rest of your days i'm concerned about the gen z's of south africa that they're going to become like typical millennials what millennials did uh just when when they were when they were starting to do really well in their careers they decimated everything and now that they're like 39 now that they're like 35 they're like oh, 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 oh i don't have anybody but a life is a lifetime so these gen z's will inevitably do what it is that the millennials did unless they get like a, a little bit of an attack of holiness unless there is like a revival or something of that nature among them unless the lord raises them up to do a better thing like joshua and caleb they're they're inevitably gonna follow after their predecessors before them they're gonna inevitably do what it is that my friends did like inevitably right my little sister is well on her way to being one of those saboteurs because of the way that she treats me and she's a gen z so they're on thin ice they're really skating on thin ice right now because they have no good example to look at but god does not need a good example in order to train people up in godliness he is our sole provider he is the uh, um, only mediator between god and man jesus christ that is so really frankly they can go directly to jesus even though they've got a bad example in either parents or their own elder sisters and brothers they they can come out of this alone by themselves but without guidance it's going to be hard for us to hope for that for them it's going to be really rough to hope for the best for the gen z's if they don't have us as an example because look at what is happening to garabo the one person trying to speak sense into them she's like nowhere and my life is really um, um unmotivating to want to follow suit after i have tried to communicate to a few gen z girls that wanted me to write them sort of kind of mentor them but they got overwhelmed but they just felt like i was too heavy uh, because for them it was like our life is not that deep or that bad and i'm like girl i was light-hearted like you at 22 because i did not imagine all of my girls would stab me in the back like literally almost see scheme song so so bad it is that all of my girls from high school all of them did stab me in the back and it wasn't all of them from varsity and afterwards that stabbed me in the back but certainly the whole entourage from high school did uh, wreak havoc in, uh, in my life using sorcery so i have however when i was like 22 uh 23 on the come up etc i never imagined that i would ever be this violently betrayed to a point out where i would have no one to turn to to a point where i would have no one to talk to so don't imagine me as just heavy girl on some you know you're very dystopian and your view of the world is kind of different it's extreme girl no it was a regular normal well-functioning highly operating and in incredibly intelligent young women like you that did this to me they all fell apart because they all just got taken by a tsunami me of insanity the moment they started to make handsome money the moment they started to make real money the moment they started to do real well not just these random entry-level jobs but they started to get like promotions into management it was when they became savages because now they were competing on everything it was when we were getting married that everybody started to become a savage where now where the two girls that were really tight now because the one has got a fiance and is getting married the other girl is starting to pass her shade it was when real big life milestones were starting to be successful successfully reached because we were all at that age that they turned savage you there sitting at the age of 21 with all of your girls still killing and kicking and you're still living at your mother's houses listen to me it's a good
it's gonna get real hard knock and deep in a minute my little sister's 22 going on 23 and she still stays at home one of these days she might move out that's when she's gonna start to become a little beast that's what you must understand that's when she and her friends gonna start to become beastly and claw at each other and pounce so that young girl was supposed to listen to me back then when she was 21 now today she's probably like 22 or 23 i, I happened upon her she happened upon my content on TikTok about a year ago before I left TikTok. So let's say a year, two years ago. So she's still more or less my sister's age, likely still as naive as well. Um, but it's going to get there. That's what I'm trying to say. Like it's going to graduate to that point where they're beastly. So don't imagine me as just this thing. You know, and so I was bright eyed, bushy tailed, fluffy, light hearted too. Walking on air the way that I was just so chill in life. And then pfft, everything just exploded overnight like proper so spiritual attack comes at you that way and um, for me it was a barrage of attack because it came from literally all my girls and family members in one sitting all at the same time like, bah, 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 bah. it might also have everything to do with the fact that i'm born again my christianity uh likely also got me a lot more attacked so just it, it exacerbated the matter but this was an epidemic frankly i missed the youth from around the age of 25 26 going upwards that's when like it started to really shuba all up in my life um so i would imagine that it's also happening it would happen what i'm thinking is that those that um are still sort of kind of looking like they're all right i mean don't you wish craft attacks they're finding themselves stuck and stranded with all manner and kinds of um strivings do you understand they're, they're struggling with all different kinds of strivings right now they don't know what's going on and so in and, of them, in and of themselves they turned to sorcery there is no way under heaven that my girls from high school for instance would bewitch me like new one I, I mean come on I wasn't like you know the most special one or whatever we all had our various gifts etc something to write home about so the like my best friend for instance I'm 100% sure that as uh, she did not target me new one it's impossible she did not just come at me glowing like a beast new one I however have like I'm like a meta human I like to say that I'm like Charles Xavier I have a spiritual gifting I got to see it I was also the only one among them that got born again and so I got given the Holy Spirit protection I got given a, a bit of an iron dome shield over my head or a weapons a missile defense system that's hovering over me like the one there in israel and so there is a marvel of protection around me and because of the fact that i gave my life to jesus he saw it fit to use me as a, a, a delusion to them he saw it fit to make my life a monument to them to show them um just how insane witchcraft is and what they do to people so he blocked me from going anywhere doing anything to make me look like a very severe case of witchcraft so that they would all get to a point where they have lost me so severely and so violently that there's no turning back i used to get dreams uh, about all this witchcraft attack already when i was still working and everything was yet to fall apart and i remember i was thinking about this last night but i i second guessed them i threw them to the side i ignored them for instance when i was still employed i got a dream where i was literally a hobo guys a hobo i was impoverished i was poverty stricken and i was walking around following like a tail all over the show one of my cousins and this cousin was walking around with her sister and she took me to a spaza shop to buy me buravors and, and like a, a hot dog with buravors in it i don't eat red meat but this cousin was trying to shove red meat down on my throat on some it's all that i am going to buy you because frankly i'm the only person here that has money at that stage i was working a very successful career and i was way i was doing way Way better than her my wealth level was loftier than her in the worst way I was a whole professional while she was still stumbling around staggering trying to start a proper career so for her to be in a position to provide for me to a point where I can't even choose what I get to eat yeah no that for me was so funny it was so laughable that I just wrote that dream off in the dream her sister was with her and when her sister saw me uh asking for a chicken sandwich and this chick was busy trying to feed me buravors uh she was looking at it uncomfortably but she was standing very firmly and stuck by her sister okay the lady that was selling these uh food stuffs at that spaza shop then looked at me on some oh my goodness you're so beautiful and when this lady started to rap on about my beauty her sister started to second guess following her sister around in all of this darkness when i woke up from that dream and that was just one of such many dreams that i got uh, around that time right i i literally brushed it off as a rubbish because there was no way under heaven i fathomed at the time that i could ever end up basically so poor that i'm basically like a hobo and where i would have like less money and less prosperity than my cousin to a point where she would be able to dictate what i eat because she's the only one buying my food look at my life today 
all these years down the line. Indeed, thanks to that witchcraft, every so often, my mother throws red meat down my throat, even though I do not eat red meat. So I have to settle for like a sandwich at cheese, kisarati cheese, all that much. Or I have to eat like um, muesli for dinner. Or I have to, yeah, makeshift, etc. When she's in one of her moods, sometimes she will literally not purchase food that makes sense for my diet. Then she will feel guilty and end up buying the things that I prefer. That's what's good. Yeah, that's my cousin's witchcraft operating. So every time that stuff happens, I remember that dream. And I'm so poor today that indeed I am like basically a hobo of the fact that I am under my mother's roof. Otherwise, I'd be homeless. And that cousin is indeed above me socioeconomically in the worst way. She got the career springboarded, skyrocketed while I lost my socioeconomic position. And her sister followed suit in the occult and was uncomfortable and apprehensive, but nonetheless did what she did. And the dream that I had last night, her sister was in it, regretting following her sister around in the occult. Her sister introduced her to the occult and she joined it apprehensively, hated everything, and now she is making an observation of the glory of godliness. But all of them have now today lost me because of the level of betrayal I was slapped with by all of them. There's no turning back. And now they all are literally casting spells on me to basically run me through another decade of sorrow, given that they can't stomach the prospect of me getting my life back together again. Mm. So if I had this dream back when I was still working, thriving, okay, I could have been like 27 or 28 or whatever. Uh, you can therefore comprehend that when you are still okay, when you're still okay and you get a dream like that, you will write it off as rubbish. So I'm pretty sure all of my friends, many of these, uh, my peers, millennials or exennials, many of them, the witchcraft that is being done against them by friends and family members, etc. But it was so far-fetched, the thing that they were seeing in dreams, that they brushed it off. Indeed, when I was dating my ex, I had a dream of being encircled by snakes. I have told you that dream before. And when I woke up and I told him about it in the morning, he brushed it off and rebuffed me until I thought of it as nothing. Like Njefela, it was just a dream. At the time that I got that dream, I brushed it off as it was just a dream. That's what's good. But it wasn't just a dream. It was God showing me what's going on. So all of these other men and women that are suffering under witchcraft spells that are currently in operation today are likely in okay enough positions in their lives. They are okay enough for them to write off what they see in dreams, even though Indeed, your cousin came up at, against you like that, girl. Indeed, your brother did do that to you. Indeed, your mother actually tried that stunt on you. It's just that you are not Garabo. And so you're not a person that has been set apart by God to be a monument against witchcraft. The Lord, I, I spoke earlier about the common, common grace of God operating over all the earth all right uh god's grace for christians is different from common grace common grace applies to all of us so uh, common grace makes sure that not all witchcraft works across everybody in the world and no matter how much you might curse them it does not just fill up a land on people otherwise the earth would literally implode the way that these witches just bewitch everything they keep on testing spells on everybody um there are things that just don't work um that which which doctors do even though the people are not born again that's the common grace of god so what i am saying is that there are people who have had rugs pulled from under their feet to lose their entire careers but instead of losing their entire careers all they lost was a job promotion or all they fail all they lost or all they struggled with was a failed job interview even though they were certain that they're going to get that job given that they've been short listed up to number two and basically promised by the future boss that i'm going to hire you and the next thing they lose the opportunity strangely but that person is still working they're still employed they're still able to pay their bond they're still able to pay their car installment they're still able to take their kids to school and pay fees so they have not lost everything therefore when you get a dream where somebody is literally throwing you in squalor poverty to a point where you have nothing and then you wake up still in your own bed you will write it off especially if the person that has subjugated you to that tyranny you cannot ever fathom them doing that to you it's like a best friend it's like your mother it's your boyfriend. It's your cousin. It's your boss. I don't know how many times I dreamt about my boss's pulling stunts and the next morning I would look at them and be like, I suga, why did I get that strange dream about this guy? And move on. Because it was just so unfathomable that they would ever pull a trick of that nature. Witchcraft was the last thing that came to my mind. I will give you another example. There was this one colleague that I used to work with, an Indian girl at MTN. I you I got this the first dream I got about her, I had I had another flood of many. 
but this is the first dream that I got about her. I was literally drowning in a swimming pool while she was standing, sitting at the ledge, and I was crying for her to come and rescue me, and she just walked away and climbed up a staircase and left me there drowning. I told her that dream at work, and she rebuffed me just like my boyfriend had some years earlier. Mm. As nothing, just brushed it off. This girl was not the type whenever I would tell her my dreams to ignore me, or rebuff them, or quickly jump into another topic but she did that and i just brushed it off i let it go other dreams she was wearing my clothes literally my shoes my dresses my everything that's the level of jealousy that she had we were very close the two of us we used to walk around together all the time we were basically best friends as colleagues that's what's good i would get dreams where she's literally me like wearing my clothes wearing my everything oh my goodness these dreams that i had whenever i would tell her rebuff me and it never the, the first thing that it never became the first thing that came to my mind that, that that's witchcraft at all because i could not ever fathom her stooping that low i used to talk to her about jesus so much we like she also used to tell me that there's a lot of witchcraft in, in the indian community especially among hindus she used to like tell me her own little horror stories that she had experienced so i imagine that she was i guess cool <laughs> type thing we used to exchange notes she wasn't a christian she was a hindu but every time i would speak about witchcraft she'd be like yeah no indians are also really hard knock at it too so i i did not imagine that she was one of them <laughs> yeah so when i got those dreams it was not the first thought at the top of my mind when i saw what i saw to infer sorcery because at the time i was cool at the time i was okay i was working i was thriving so I just brushed it off as some silly dream. Brushed it off as some silly, but it wasn't. That was God showing me her witchcraft. Lo and behold, exactly what she did to me in my dreams would come to pass within the next couple of months. Where it is that I was underestimated. She had taken over my particular uh, whole body, favored and chosen over me. I lost my job, long story short, because of that girl. She was the instigator, the primary source of all of the sorrow concerning my case at MTN. She sabotaged everything and they stood with her even though she was wrong and the evidence was all pointing against her it was pointing against her but they ignored it spiritual manipulation yeah it was only after everything fell apart and landed on me like a ton of boulders on my head that i realized that witchcraft was showing me that i realized that it was witchcraft so it took me losing everything to make the right conclusions to reach the right inferences concerning the presence of sorcery losing everything then made me be like aha oh like all these years down the line with all this poverty i'm like aha concerning that dream that i saw with my cousin so what i'm trying to say here is that if the common grace of god did not apply and all witchcraft were to work ultimately you would all know you would likely all know who has done what to you because god tends to slap you with dreams he tends to show you what's going on witchcraft is spiritual it has to make itself known there are rules in the kingdom of darkness there are rules in the kingdom of heaven a lot of what it is that the devil does even though he does it in the darkness he has got to show it on the rooftops think about what it is um that the entertainment industry operates concerning uh a pro a predictive programming you know how all of the plans that they have for us all somehow they peep their ugly heads in movies they rear their ugly heads in advertisements they rear their ugly heads in subliminal messages predictive programming that's what it's called they only go and watch the simpsons that's what's good so the devil it's almost as if though just like god he says in his word i get it the devil counterfeits everything that god does the lord says that he will not do anything without first showing his servants the prophets so before the lord acts he will show a prophet what he's going to do that they might prophesy and that he might be brought glory to once the prophecy comes to pass who wants to be god also operates with similar principles he has to have a rule book by which he operates in order for him to be a reliable or a um a, a, a believable deity in order for the devil to be a believable deity he has to operate like deity and the main deity the be all and end all of a big g god um first shows his servants the prophets what he's going to do before he does it whether or not and, and people cannot block it from happening uh, no one can speak and have it happen unless the lord has first decreed it no one can also be delivered from the hand of god so if god has spoken a judgment and you're going to be slapped under that judgment absent of repentance you cannot be delivered from it even if you are shown it in advance even if you are told it in advance like for instance my cousin has had a judgment told her through me i spoke about it where the lord showed me her sudden death but i did let her know that absent that she could repent 
repent and so survive. In a lot of times what the wicked do is when they get prophecies, they despise them. The Bible says do not despise prophecy. They despise prophecies. And so they literally go out of their way to do things in such a way so as to prevent the prophecy from coming to pass. But it becomes that very activity that brings the pro prophecy. So they shoot themselves in the foot, just like Joseph's brothers. Joseph prophesied about him being a big head honcho one day. His brothers despised that prophecy so much that they threw him into slavery. Here it is that Joseph is now in Egypt and years down the line, the same prophecy that they try to prevent comes to pass. That is a massive summary of the story of Joseph. Go read it in the scriptures to gauge the truth entirely. There, the devil operates much in the same way, where his servants are always just speaking what it is that they're gonna do. And there is nothing that people can do to prevent what the devil is going to do, even if they try to come up against it. But for, of course, the kingdom of the heaven, we are the only people that can conquer the darkness because we've been given authority to do that. Trample on serpents and or scorpions over all the part of the enemy. Uh, but the devil tends to, however, take black a tsunami, everybody else in the world. So he can successfully tell you what's going to happen next year through Hollywood. And you probably just kind of have to wait and watch it happen. Uh, the, even the, the, the pandemic that slept us, predictive programmed, like we saw it and then it happened. Nobody ever fathomed the world could ever get to a point where there are lockdowns all over the earth, all at the same time. Quarantines all over the earth all at the same time. It happened in one movie once upon a time and boom, da -na -na -na, here it is that it slapped us in 2019. Predictive programming, that's what's good. Do you understand what I'm saying? So just like predictive programming, uh, the devil will not do anything without first showing his servants the witches or the wicked and what have you without first showing people what he's gonna do without yeah so witches have got a plan a prerogative a strategy that's what's good or the devil has a plan a prerogative a strategy he then has minions working that um, the thing vessels on earth people that are of the kingdom of darkness these people cast a spell but the devil knows that he cannot blind people from the spell that has been cast Otherwise, he will not be a reliable deity. Plus, it is also under the umbrella of God who says everything that is hidden in the darkness must be and indeed will be shown on the rooftops. So, victims of witches, literally, I believe, something like 90% of the time about what it is that people are doing to them. The only uncomfortable thing about dreaming is that sometimes you can be, you can have a, a spell cast on you to forget your dream in the morning. That's why sometimes you wake up and you, you, you just a whiff of what it is that you saw. It's a little bit dry. You don't know what's going on, but you definitely dreamt it. So that's why I like to tell people, watch out for your dreams. Listen to them. Look out for the people that are being exposed in dreams and people who put cloaking spells on themselves. In other words, to make sure that their faces don't get seen in dreams, there's always something in the dream that will tell you who is responsible. I already explained that um, about the, that chick in South Africa that cast a spell on me to try and like decimate my YouTube channel to make me stop and also to end up working at Wimpy or something. She tried to conceal herself, but something in the dream evidenced that it was her. And I explained it in that video. I'm not gonna go into detail right now because I'm, exp I'm explaining another thing altogether. And now that you have uh, heard what I'm saying, so, uh, what I'm trying to get to the point of is likely all of my friends and family members, my peers basically, that have been uh, spell cast on, that have been afflicted by people in the occult, they knew, they got dreams, they got shown what was going on. But just like me back in the day, ignoring my dreams or writing them off as nothing because they were so unfathomable, it, it was so highly unlikely to be a reality, I was so trusting of these people that it could, never could happen that way. But they were guilty. And the only thing that made me finally start to focus on my dream, real dreams, realize what's actually happening was me losing everything and my life looking literally like the dream showed. My life looking like the spell that I saw in my dream. That's what made me find out that this was witchcraft. When I lost my job and when the person that was responsible for the loss of my job was that Indian girl. When years down the line, I was basically living, basically living like a hobo, being shoved down my throat red meat when I don't eat red meat and my family knows that. I remembered the dream with my cousin and I was like, whoa, I never would have come to that conclusion. So long story short, how many of you don't reach a conclusion that that's your friend that has cast a spell on your career? How many of you, when you see a person stealing your husband in a dream, think this could never happen. My girl is not like that. Five years down the line, Never mind five, two years, a year. And, uh, first of all, within the year, you enter into wild arguments and fights with your husband. He cheats on you. The second year, you try to make it work, but everything just falls apart. By the end of the second year, you have divorced. 
you never ever had to deal with your friend do you understand actively sleeping with your husband your friend never slept with your husband she was never the mistress but ever since this the the, the the day when you found her having sex with your husband in a dream everything in your marriage fell apart everything in your marriage fell apart and you could not understand what's going on and your husband actually did cheat but not with her with somebody else and guess who's there to comfort you all the time when your husband is, is doing what he's doing all up in your grill messing up she's the one that's there when you finally make a decision to have a divorce she's the one that's like girl are you sure don't you want to work through it okay look i'm gonna be there for you you had a dream of her having sex with your husband literally two years ago she never touched your man you could never suspect her of anything like that you brushed it off as your own sick imagination and you kept the woman around that literally devastated your marriage and caused your man to go out on you so you saw it once you get the divorce because the situation is not that bad it's not so taxing so as to humiliate the living daylights out of your friend it does not look hand to glove like what you saw in the dream you can never ever go back and imagine that your friend did it but with me what god did with me is that he made what eventually happened so hand to glove that i could only conclude witchcraft so many of you are told what witches are doing because the devil cannot do anything without showing his servants the witches first because he likes to counterfeit the kingdom of heaven he is into predictive programming therefore and again god himself has said nothing that is hidden can stay hidden it must be put on the rooftops meaning that absent of a prophet understanding what's going on in your life absent of a seer seeing what's happening in your life you've got yourself you've got your own dream there aren't enough prophets to go around in this eight billion full earth there aren't enough seers to go around and those who can discern spirits those who can interpret dreams there aren't many of us meaning that a lot of times you have got to tap in to your own dreams to figure out your own prophecies that you're given by God because it's very highly likely that once somebody has cast a spell, you dreamt it. You dreamt it, but you wrote it off. You brushed it off.